How do y'all look like slives? I think it's time to play a little better than wolves. All right. I need to go get some food, apparently. I got some work done. Down through here on the... Oh. On the path. As you can see. Uh, but I didn't get finished. So. That's what I'm going to be working on still. It's only so much time in the day, you know? Uh, yeah, I just, uh, <laughs> just got my chair fixed. My, uh, uh, so I, uh, basically I have this recliner that I use as my chair. And, um, I don't recline it very often. Uh, I mean, I do sometimes, but. I don't know. I feel like I more just sit in it. Uh, and there's not so much I could probably do. Oh, three of these. Dump. Man, it's so dark. And uh, last year, I, uh, I fell in a hole and really hurt my knee. It still um it still gives me some pain, but it's not too bad now. Um but oof. When it happened it was bad. And so the recliner was something that I was using quite a bit because I needed to lay out that leg and uh put ice. Just constant ice. Uh, my knee, basically, uh, basically, like my my knee iced down the whole time I was awake for I don't know, like six weeks. Um, I guess not constantly iced down, but a lot of ice packs on the knee for about six, six to eight weeks uh, before I finally decided I could handle. what it was doing and um i just i i don't know if i broke something like i i mean i'm pretty sure i must have like pulled a tendon or ruptured a tendon or something like that uh i didn't break my leg but woof that is it was a lot of pain for sure and uh anyways so so I've got my uh, my recliner, right? And uh, I couldn't I couldn't rest my leg against the um, hey hey now. You guys got your own rooms. Why is this mushroom out here? There shouldn't be a mushroom out here. You guys got your own little rooms for mushroom spawning. This is a separate area, okay? Um, but, uh, so my leg was so uh, <laughs> tender. The skin hurt. Uh, I, I mean, I really bruised my leg up and, um, so I had to put a pillow under my leg because I couldn't stand to have my skin touch the, um, I have a cloth chair, but it's, um, I don't know, kind of a rough texture. And so anyways, 
uh, this is a really meandering story. Uh, <laughs> the ch the pillow got hung up in the chair mechanism, and so I uh, ooh, look at my poor my poor pickaxe here. And so in the attempt to uh, pull said pillow free from the chair mechanism on the legs, uh, I broke the bolt, one of the bolts. And so um, then there was no having my legs kicked out, and I ended up having to um, I use a different chair as a footstool for my leg and then um, I had a friend who uh, has like a metal lathe thing and so I wanted him to just I needed someone mechanical to go to the store I couldn't I couldn't ride in a vehicle because I couldn't bend my knee that far without being in pain and uh, like I said it's it's a lot lot better now uh, it was it's pretty bad at the time and um, so basically, I just I wanted uh, one of my friends who is mechanically inclined to go to the store and get me a uh, bolt that fit the size of the hole, and then I was going to drill out the other side and just put a thicker bolt in there because I actually had a different chair had a similar thing happen to it. Um, wasn't a pillow that got jammed in it though. It was uh, uh, not understanding how a recliner works, I guess. And um, so I knew that I had been purchasing bolts for that particular chair until it finally completely broke down. And um, I was using thin bolts that matched the smaller hole, and then I would use. Um, washers uh actually i think i used a nut i think the nut uh the nut was thin enough no was small enough in diameter to fit in the hole uh okay i'm trying to think of what shape i would say these bolts are in they're dumb I, I don't understand why this is a thing. So uh, what the deal is, is they've got a bolt that's like as thick as your pinky. All right. Uh, but then the end of it, the end of it is narrowed down to like, I don't even know, uh, the width of a, a stylus. Eh, a little thicker than a stylus, but you know kind of like that like the 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 head of a stylus the not the end you point with but the end that like clips on right and then that's the bolt that's the part of the bolt that basically holds all of the pressure right uh of keeping the the mechanism in place and so when that gets loose then it pulls harder on the the ends with the um whatever holds it together and uh, so when those snap off, of course, then the bolt won't stay in place and then the whole mechanism comes apart. So that's what was happening. And uh, so my friend got uh, uh, went and made an identical kind of bolt for me, which isn't what I asked him to do. And, uh, and so that worked for a while, but it came apart again the other day. Because uh, once it comes apart, right, then things aren't aligned the way they were before. And so, um, I finally, uh, it came apart last mm, two weeks ago. I think two weeks ago it happened. And like I said, I, I barely ever recline, I feel. And so then once it happened, all I want to do is recline, right? And now that it's fixed, I'm just sitting here fine without wanting to recline. I, earlier today, I was just like, man, I wish I could kick my legs out. I wish I could kick my legs out. I just want to kick my legs. And now, I'm just like, man, whatever, I'm good. Um, I probably will kick my legs out later, but enjoy some sweet, sweet reclining. 
Um, but the brand of the chair is, uh, I don't know what the brand is. Uh, they're a American company. It's actually not too far from where I live, um, where their factory is. And, uh, apparently they have a lifetime warranty on the kind of breakage that happened. And so, uh, when I called up the, uh, furniture company they uh they said oh yeah we can uh we can fix that uh and all it will all it will cost you is i don't know why i just did that that doesn't help me get up to the top all it will cost you is shipping and the service fee to come out and put it in uh and so, yeah, they came out today and fixed up my chair. It took him like uh, 20 minutes. And uh, and then I was uh, back in business here. So, which is awesome. It only cost me 90 bucks. Which is good, because a new chair will cost you like a thousand. A new chair, like the one that I currently have. Anyways. Uh... But yeah, I'm hoping to get this uh, this mess here all done in and get this mushroom farm back in business. I probably don't need to be digging up this high but I picked this as my my roof area for the dig, and so I'm gonna stick with it. I don't know if I can reach that very easily. I can, I guess. It seems fine. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, this has definitely been an interesting project to me because water physics in this game can be crazy. I still I still need to get the what is it six or so um, pistons down through there to uh, close off the water like I have. Uh, I actually think that part will be pretty easy. It'll, it'll just take uh, what a few pistons, some redstone, and some repeaters, and then um, I'll also need to do probably another lever um, to do the lighting which I haven't put in yet I'm gonna figure that out I also <laughs> uh, this is a weird one I um, I had a pillow that I had for years, years, that I really liked, and uh, I decided I should probably replace my pillow, and um, it's just a, it was a simple foam pillow, and everywhere I looked, 
I could not find just a simple foam pillow. And the thing is, is that it was a very flat pillow and I like to read. And so what I would do is I would take this pillow and I would fold it in half. And then I would read with it folded in half. And then when I would go to sleep, I would unfold it and I would lay on the, you know, few inch thick pillow that I had. And uh, I'll tell you what, I can't find a pillow I like now that I got rid of that pillow. Uh, I just swapped out to a new pillow. I had purchased a, everybody was like, this is the pillow. If you're a side sleeper, if you're a tosser, if you're a reader, this is the pillow. And uh, yeah, I hated it. Uh, I, I gave it a shot. I gave it, I slept with it for like... six or eight months <laughs> I feel like and um, I just I woke up the other morning and my ear uh, had folded over while I was sleeping and was pinched between my head and this pillow and I thought I was dying because it hurt so bad when I woke up like, the whole side of my face felt like it was swollen and uh, and just sharp shooting pains everywhere in the side of my head. And then I realized that my ear is twisted over. Like, just the end of my ear. Like, if you put your, again, with my pinky measurement, if you put your pinky against your ear and you folded that much of your ear over. <laughs> so not like your ear was folded down, right? Like, it can happen. No, no. Like, my, my ear was actually folded in half. The top part was, oh, it hurts so bad. So I'm like, that's it. I'm done with this pillow. I can't get comfortable with it. It's too thick. And it's it's uh, shredded foam, which everybody was saying, yeah, yeah, I know you definitely want to go with shredded foam. And I'm just like, I hate, I hate it. It's so lumpy. It was so lumpy. And then it was also, if the lumps got aligned correctly, whoops, so hard. And, uh, so yeah, I had to get a different pillow. And so now I've got this, uh, whoa. So now I bought, um, shredded microfiber. I'm not sure I like it either. Uh, it's definitely better than the shredded foam, but uh, I feel like it, it uh, traps too much heat. And it's weirdly fluffy. Um, anyway, just got one more, one more big long section here to get done. And uh, we get to go. Uh, let's see. Oh, dude, I need. I haven't done any of these. Whoops. So it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'll probably stick with this pillow. At least for now. Because at least it doesn't feel hard sometimes. And when I mean hard, I mean like I put a book in my bed and I'm sleeping on a book. With that shredded foam pillow. I hated it. Making my ear hurt so bad. That was the last straw. Oof. That was, that was the end of that nonsense. All right. Just getting rid of all this gravel in my way. But yeah, I just, I, I'm not sure about this uh, shredded microfiber. 
Um, now the shred of foam is like chunks of foam, like big, like remote control size chunks of foam in this pillow. It feels like, and I'm just like, mm, this is so weird. Um, the shredded microfiber is like fake cotton. And, um, but it's very, it both feels like there's nothing supporting my head and it's pushing against my head really hard, uh, at the same time, which is bizarre to say the least, but that's what it feels like. And so I don't know what to think about the oddness but, um, yeah. Uh. <laughs> I'll tell you what, getting, getting, uh, getting a repair guy over to your house. The dude loves his job. And he just talked and talked, talked about the furniture brand and the type of chair I've got and how many people like the kind of chair I got and how he likes the chair, kind of chair I got and how he has one at home and how he went to the, <laughs> he went to the, uh, factory where they make the chairs to see them make the chairs and and when they were there the the company was putting a uh, float in the local parade and they so they had made a giant version of the chair and how him and 10 other guys got to sit in the chair <laughs> and i'm just like mm -mm, mm -hmm. just, this is my chair man i want to kick my legs out i'm glad you love the chair uh, I think it's a pretty good chair, but I don't love the chair the way you seem to. Uh, I was a little surprised he didn't recognize the breed of our dog, too. Um, he asked me what kind of dog we had. I'm like, it's a yellow lab. It's, it's clearly just a big old dopey yellow lab, which is a very common breed of dog. Um, like maybe not other places, but around here, a yellow lab, very common. Dude, that is too high for me to reach now. And then, like, <laughs> we have a very, I wouldn't say cluttered, but we have a very cluttered house. I'm going to say cluttered. I, there's a lot going on in our house. Let's, let's put it that way. And, um, I had to kind of chuckle to myself because he was like, like, there are people here. There are people here that we walked past and my office uh here where i i'm at my computer for my job and then um you know record from is in the basement and so he's like oh we gotta go down there i'm like yeah because the chair's down here in my office area and uh he's like oh all right and we walked past people to get to where we're at and he goes you live here alone I'm like, no. <laughs> He's like, oh, well, I was thinking this is probably a big house for one guy. I'm like, yeah, no, we walked past my niece and nephew. Like, they talked to me while you were standing there. <laughs> uh. 
That's okay, though. You can go back to talking about chairs. It's fine. He was a nice guy. Uh, I'm not sure he's been here before. Um... He asked me what my job was. I told him data analyst. Because uh, that's what I do in the daytime. And uh, and then he asked me, what title would you give the job you do? <laughs> I'm like, data analyst? Like, when you asked me what I do and I said data analyst, that's what I am. I'm a data analyst. What, what more do you want than that? Um... And then he wanted to know what I did in my job. I said like three words. He's like, yep, you know what? Never mind. I just like, whew, does the hand over his head motion. He said, when the words get much bigger than it was or as, then I'm done. <laughs> I'm like, okay, guy. And they did the, uh, you know, standard. Them gas prices, huh? <laughs> I think maybe you can analyze them gas prices and see why they're so high. And I'm like, well, I don't quite look at that kind of data. I'm like, I probably could. I mean, I give you my opinion about why the gas prices are so high. Weird. Where did that... Oh, it's up there. I was like, how did I lose a torch? I saw that torch, and then I knocked that torch down, and then there was no torch. Ah. <sighs> But it's been quite a bit of um, Saturday working on D and D stuff. Uh, I talked about this in the I think my Seven Days to Die videos. I like to talk about D and D stuff, but I uh, I bought this program to make maps, and so Saturday was the first day I really really used it. Uh, worked pretty good. Um, we use a uh, virtual tabletop to play on uh, because it's like a two and a half hour drive to where the other guys play, or where the other guys live, not play. I, technically, I guess that's where they play, but you know, where they live. And um, it's like a half hour drive the opposite direction to the other guy. And so uh, we play online because it's just way easier that way, right? And, uh, so I, uh, I rent a, uh, server for a program called Forge, no, Foundry. Forge is the website. Foundry is the system. And, um... And so we use that uh, for um, Starfinder. And so I've never used it for D&D. &D, and so I want to use it for D&D. &D. And so I bought this program to make maps. It's really, really nice. Uh, I feel like it probably can be used for other virtual tabletops than the way I'm using it for Foundry. Because it's like a 3D map maker, and it uh, my favorite part about it is that you a lot of map makers, when you go to make a map, they require you to lay out the um, uh, everything that's in a room, right? So you you put the walls down, and then if it's like a tavern, we'll say. 
then you have to go in and have to put in all the benches, all the all the uh, tables, the lights, the food, the drinks, you know. Um, and so, uh, what's the name of the program? Dungeon Alchemist, I think is the name of the program uh, I was trying out. Uh, it does all that for you. And so you just draw the size of the room and then it puts random things in it to try and design. So there's there's some work to it because, you know, you have to tweak it to fit what you're doing. Um, but it's very nice to draw, like, uh, just rooms and hallways and have them auto-filled with stuff. Uh, especially when you're making a dungeon because, you know, unless you're doing something super specific with your dungeon, then chances are you're just doing random rooms anyways. Um, and uh, so I like to combine it with a few different things. There's a... Uh, uh, I think it's Donjon is uh, the one website that makes random dungeons, and so I'll hop over there and make a quick random dungeon map on Donjon, and then I use that to lay out my map in Dungeon Alchemist. And then um, once that was all done, uh, then it was able to do a top-down... I did uh, one-quarter walls, so you get you know a bit of the 3D feel to the map. Um, but because we're playing on a virtual tabletop, what's really cool about it is that when you put in a light source in the 3D mapper, um, you put in that light source and then uh, like in the mapper, it's an actual light. So I feel like there must be some way to get the 3D map effects into a virtual tabletop otherwise what's the point of putting all that effort into a mapper that no one's ever going to see the 3d effects for right things like opening and closing doors and you know lights lighting up um for me though i'm just happy to get a, a nice map and so um yeah it turned out pretty good uh and because it's on the virtual tabletop Everywhere there's a light, it reads that, and there's like a data file that goes with it as so you just export it to the type of tabletop you're using. So, like, I'm using Forge or Foundry, whichever way that goes. Um, and so I just tell it, export to Forge. No, Foundry. Forge. Foundry. I'm pretty sure it's Foundry. Export to Foundry. And then it makes the appropriate data file for Foundry. And then when I put it in the Foundry... Um, I load in the, the data file that tells it where all the lights are and where all the walls are and where all the doors are. And then you load the actual image. And uh, it was very, very easy. Um, but it took a while to make the map because, you know, drawing the map is fine, but the, the Dungeon Alchemist likes to put lots of things in. And then I'm like, okay, now I've got to take a lot of these things out because they don't fit with the theme of my dungeon. Um, Dungeon Elements is like a early access still, so it's got it's got a bit of a. Oh, I didn't realize you were. I thought you were a slime down here making all that noise. Uh, but yeah, so oh no, that's the first time I've done that. Oh man. That is the first time I have broken my pickaxe. Listen, buddy. I ain't got time for your nonsense. I broke my pick. Well. I think this is probably where I'm going to call it for today. And, uh... Oh, he followed me. He followed me? And, um, I'd say that I would get this done before next time, but, you know, that's not going to happen. I'm terrible at getting back on here in between recording sessions, so. With that, be better than the small things. Lean to the light. I will talk to you later.